Hey there, I'm coming on to help you with the assignment for lesson 1.03, Transformation of Energy. Um, this is kind of a confusing lab and I wanna make sure that you understand exactly what you need to do so that you can turn in your best work on the very first try and you're following all the expectations for that assignment. Now remember, before you even go to the assignment, you need to be working through the lesson pages. You need to work through all of the lesson pages and make sure that you understand the information because that's what the assignment's all about. You should be spending more time in the lesson pages than you are completing the assignment, not the other way around. You're also going to notice when you come here that there is an additional lab report. Now if your school district has allowed you to have access to Google Documents, I have created the lab report in the form of a, a Google Doc. It's your choice. You can use the one that is in Buzz on the last page of the lesson or you can use the Google Doc that I've created for you. If you choose to use this one and your district has access to Google Docs, when you click here it gives you the link to make your own copy of that report. So I'm going to go ahead and make a copy so you can see what it looks like. All right, so this is the Google Doc form of version of the lab report. Uh, you can also I'll show you how to use the one in Buzz if this does not work. If this does not work and you are blocked from it, you should really contact your school district's IT department and let them know that this is a problem for you and that you need to have access to Google Docs from me, your WVS teacher, and your other teachers. Um, I can't fix that. It's If you can't access it, it's an issue with the school district where you reside. All right, so let's get to the lesson pages. On the weekly suggested schedule, I give you lots of time to work through these lesson pages. I think I only have you going through two a day. So if you follow that, you're really gonna be learning about the different um, types of energy and the different forms of energy. Um, they talk a little bit about a model and how we use models in science to help us make predictions and also to test theories and ideas. Page number three is a very important page that talks about the two main types of energy. We have potential energy and we have kinetic energy. Now if you know what the word potential means, potential means the ability is there. So potential energy means the ability is there for energy and it it hasn't it's it's at it's it's built up and it's ready to go. It hasn't gone yet, but it's ready to go. If you think of a roller coaster, if you've ever ridden a roller coaster and you're in in there and it takes you up the hill and you get to that very top, you can feel in your body the potential energy because you know it's about to be transformed into a different kind of energy to when you go down the hill. But that moment you're at the very top and it kind of pauses that's potential, potential energy. Same thing with this bow and arrow. This woman has the bow pulled back, taut, ready to go. And that energy is as strong as it's going to be. It's potential. It's right there, ready to go. As soon as she releases her fingers, it's going to snap and transform into kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. So potential is the readiness to move. And kinetic energy is the actual movement. Those are the two main types of energy you're going to need to know for this lab. All right, make sure you're going through the other um, pages because this page four talks about the law of conservation of energy, which is hugely important to your assignments. You need to understand both parts of that law. And then the idea of transforming energy from one form to another. There's a video here for you to watch and I'm going to make us the review page. I'm going to jump us here to the assignment page. All right, again, make sure you take a look at this. You're able to answer these questions. If you're confused by them, go back to the lesson pages and look for the answers. Um, same with these terms. Make sure that you have an understanding of the terms. The assignment is in this green box and it is a lab to transform energy and there are two parts to it. Um, the lab report, if you choose to use the one in Buzz, is located right here. 
Once you open it, you're not going to be able to type on it, so you have options at the bottom. You can either open the file to type on it, or you can print it and handwrite it and then take a picture. So you have three options for turning in this lab report. You can use the Google Doc if you have access. You can open the file in Buzz and type on the document there, or you can print it off and write it by hand and take a picture. Lots of options. Take us a second here to get back to where I was. All right, so down here is a Rube Goldberg machine simulator, and this is what you need to work on for part one of your lab report. In the lab report, you're going to put the title of the lab. It's called Transformation of Energy, your name, your instructor's name, me, Mrs. Lohoff, and the date that you complete it. Now, if you turn it in late, don't worry. I'd much rather have you watch this video, work carefully through the assignment, and turn it in correctly after the suggested due date, you won't be marked down, than for you to rush through it and then I have to send it back to you with feedback and you're spending a lot more time on it than you needed to. All right, so here's part one. Rube Goldberg simulation research. You're going to complete the simulation that's located in the lesson pages by selecting the different shelves and levers and the weight and the slingshot. It tells you everything you need to select to either activate them or deactivate them. Once you think the design is complete, you're going to se um, select go and test the design. And then you're going to have to go and make modifications for it. So I'm going to show you what that means. Here is the Rube Goldberg machine, the text that you can read, and then begin. So if I press go, the machine will start running, the ball drops, and oops, something isn't right. I need to make an adjustment because this shelf is level and we want the ball to travel. We want to transform the potential energy into kinetic energy and move it into this funnel so that the machine keeps going. So if I click on the shelf, it will give the shelf some slant, a slant and a slope. And if I do this again, all right, well now the scissors went, but we the scissors isn't cutting anything. So I have to, get the string up there for the scissors to cut and then I can see here that when the weight drops the the lever or the catapult isn't activated correctly um, it doesn't it doesn't have potential energy so I'm going to switch this so now this has potential energy and we'll try it one more time all right and we're going to keep going the goal of this machine is to get the shade to come down over the window that's what you're trying to do. So you're going to need to come through and get everything to work so that the shade eventually comes down. Once you've gotten that to work, you come back here and you're going to look at that machine and list three examples of where potential energy is transformed to kinetic energy. Where do you have the potential for energy to happen? It's ready and waiting and then it transfers into motion, energy of motion three different examples and make sure you are using complete sentences not just jotting down your ideas they even give you an example here the ball has potential energy when it sits on the shelf that transforms into kinetic energy when it falls to the ground you could use this sentence frame to um, for all three examples and just enter in the things um, that you noticed were potential energy that transformed so that is part one Part two is you're going to design your own Rube Goldberg device. This is so much fun. You can build one in your home. I've had two daughters that have built, um, they're now in high school, and when they were in middle school, they built Rube Goldberg machines in our living room. Um, one of my daughters, it was quite elaborate, and we couldn't sit on the couch for several days. Uh, it, was, it was pretty, pretty cool. You can choose to build your own. Rube Goldberg machines usually are built to um, do a very simple task, something like turn on a light or uh, pour dog food into a dog dish or uh, push down a toaster, things like that. They don't usually do very difficult jobs. Push the button on a coffee maker, things like that. And then they have this elaborate device um, that can help you help that, that the that goes through all the different transformations of energy to make that end result happen. 
So you can choose to build one. If you don't want to build one, that's fine. You can draw one. So make sure in your drawing you include very clear steps that that has to go through that looks similar to the Rube Goldberg simulation in the lesson. All right, once you've either built it or drawn it, you're going to go through the this um, lab report and complete it. So the purpose of it is to build a model, that's the Rube Goldberg machine that shows how energy transforms from one form to another and supports the law of conservation of energy. Here's a sentence starter for your hypothesis. Um, if I transfer potential, my little guy is not cooperating here. There we go. If I transfer potential and kinetic energy using a Rube Goldberg device, then I will be able to turn on a light switch, push the power on a coffee maker, feed the dog, whatever your machine is designed to do, that's what you're gonna fill into that blank. Next, you have a materials section. Even if you drew it out, you need to list all the materials that would be included for your device. If I wanted to build it, what would I need? Then your procedure, you're going to give a summary of how your design works from start to finish. So you need to, um, first this will happen, then this will happen. You need to make sure that there are at least three energy transformations in your machine because that's what's coming up later. Uh, this is the part where you're also going to need to include a picture right here. It says be sure to include either the drawing, a picture of your machine, or a video of the actual Rube Goldberg design working. And then your data. Here you're going to list three ty types of energy that were transformed. So you could have potential energy transforming to sound energy, potential energy transforming to kinetic energy, and then how did that happen in your machine? Did the ball fall off the shelf? Did a book topple over? What happened? And you have to have three steps from your machine. Then finally, you're going to answer these last two questions. You're going to describe how the the Rube Goldberg device follows the law of conservation of energy. If you don't know what that is, go back to page four. If you're still confused, reach out and we can have a talk about it. Make sure that you include both parts of the law of conservation of energy. Yeah, there are two parts. Address both of them in your answer. And then you need to finally give a real world example of an energy transformation that uses two of the following forms of energy. All right, so here are, we have two types of energy, can, uh, potential and kinetic, but there are many forms of energy. You can have chemical energy. Batteries are chemical, uh, filled with chemicals that transform energy to run products. We can have mechanical energy, nuclear energy, gravitational energy, radiant energy from sunlight, electrical energy, thermal or heat energy, and sound energy. I'm going to give you an example of a microwave. You cannot use the microwave as your example for number two. You're going to have to come up with a different one. But if I want to heat food in a microwave, I put food in there, right? And I push my time and I hit start. Well, what energy transformation is happening? How is this machine working? What's making it work? You might think, well, you have to plug it in, right? Because if I was holding a microwave right here in my hand, and it wasn't plugged in, it's not gonna work. It has to be plugged in. Well, what type of energy are you using when you plug something in? That's electrical energy, right? So the microwave is transforming electrical energy into what kind of energy to heat the food? Thermal. That's what a microwave does. It also can create um, sound energy because you can hear it. It makes a buzzing sound usually while it runs and radiant energy because it does create, there's a light bulb in there that goes. Um, and there's some motion as well if you have a plate that turns around. So that's a real world example. You can't use a microwave in yours. <laughs> you have to use something different. All right, I hope you found this helpful. I know this was a long video, but this is a rather complicated lab and I wanted to make sure you understood exactly what you needed to do. If you have questions, you know you can email me. All right. Bye, guys.